Well, hi there guys, and welcome to another video. So guys, I have a sealed package in front of me. The keen-eyed amongst you may note that the tape that seals it has the word Juanageur written on it, which probably means it's time for me to make another X99 video. Long-time viewers of my channel will note that I've made a couple of X99 videos in the past with varying levels of success. I've certainly tried a few motherboards. Well, there was this motherboard by Jia Hua Yu, a name you know and trust in motherboards, where I couldn't even get the second socket to work at all. But that said, it is performing its role admirably with just one socket populated, and I've affectionately titled this computer Chabudua. And then there's this funky boy, a motherboard by Machinist, where both sockets work absolutely fine. This is my production server running at home. I've uh, titled this particular one Tuoshan. So for this video, I bought a Fuananjia bundle, motherboard and CPU, just single socket this time. I also bought a Fractal Design Focus G case. I like the Fractal Design cases, they're great to work in, but I didn't need anything fancy. The Focus G is nice and cheap. For the rest of it, I'm just cobbling together from stuff I already had kicking around. So I already had this Noctua um, heatsink fan appropriate to the socket in question. I have this 2080 Ti that's not doing anything. I have this 900 watt, really rather old Antec power supply, but I'm sure it will be fine. I have a bag of assorted DDR4, no idea what's in there. There's a very small amount of RAM in this bundle, but I'm going to need a bit more than that anyway. Um, and then I have the NVMe left over from my last video. So I'm going to get on and open this up and see what we've got inside. Take it out of its packaging. So here we have it. Fuananjou gaming motherboard. Don't plan to do any gaming on this. All solid capacitance. DDR3 stroke DDR4. Interesting, I didn't know it supported DDR3. Uh, yep, so. Fresh out of Shenzhen. What have we got? Ah, uh, we have the obligatory SATA cable. Panel connector three. Years warranty? Maybe, who knows, definitely not worth it. Some screws, the RAM is part of the bundle, probably won't use that. Right, here we have it. What a compact boy this is. Let's open her up. CPU is in the socket. Nice bit of foam protecting the back of this. Ooh, lovely, what a beauty. That is a beauty, isn't it? So, we've got our four RAM sockets, that's nice. One PCI-X16, a PCI-X times one. Going to need to find myself a CMOS battery. Pretty sure I've got one kicking around. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Um, CPU, what's that on there? What did I buy? 2680V4. Okay, decent. Right, um... We will we'll start some work on this boy now and uh, and come back to you. Right, we've got a couple of things done now. The case is out of its box. Here is the case. Uh, so it has a fan in the front and a fan in the back. And I have installed the Antec High Current Gamer Power Supply. It's not modular, so I have uh, cable tied up the cables I won't be using. And there are the ones I will. I actually think that model of power supply has been out of production for a while now. I think it's probably quite old, but it is fit for purpose. Uh, then the motherboard, I have attached the heatsink and fan to the CPU. That's all looking good. Um, I've used the memory that came with the motherboard because I'd like to make sure it works before I swap it out with some of my memory. Uh, and uh, the NVMe is installed as well. So um, that's the first bit done. Next step, we're going to mount the motherboard in the case. And I'll come back to you after that's done. Okay, so we've got the motherboard in the case now. I was a little disappointed to discover that the motherboard only has one DC case fan connector. So I've only plugged in the rear fan for the moment. I guess I'll be buying a splitter cable so I can also plug the front fan in, but that's no problem. Um, the motherboard power connector and motherboard CPU power connector are both plugged in. Front panel connector, HD audio, 
front USB, etc. All the usual motherboard stuff all plugged in. So hopefully that's all connected up correctly. Um, did a bit more tidying of some of the cables. I'll tidy the cables around the back before I do the final uh, job. Um, now all I need to do is to plug in a GPU. Um, and then probably before I do any final dressing of cables, I will power it up and make sure it's all chicken soup. Okay, that's the rest of everything else connected up. Bit of cable management done. Rear panel on, haven't put the front panel on yet. Uh, so let's hit the power button and see what happens. Something has come on. That's good. So, uh, yep, yeah, the rear fan is spinning, front fan is not connected, the GPU appears to have power, at least. Uh, the CPU fan is spinning, uh, so all signs are that something might happen at some point. Ooh! American Megatrends. A BIOS. Ooh, a BIOS. That's good. Um, I have my Windows to go USB stick here, so let me whack that in and uh, control Dell and I don't know if it'll try and boot off that given there's no other bootable devices but uh, we will see it's actually fairly quick to get to the point of booting a heck of a lot faster than the dual socket boards that I have um, so yeah that's good though it's not exactly the fastest thing ever it's not really like the speed of a desktop board usually would be. Um, okay, there we go. That's a booting Windows to go. USB. Excellent. Well, I'm going to assume all is well with this. I might um, now just have a quick nose around in Windows and make sure all the temps are good. Um, and then I'll probably go back into the BIOS and play around a little bit. But uh, all in all, things are looking positive. Right, I will get back to you shortly. I just wanted to interject briefly to answer the question, should you do this? Because in almost all situations, the answer is probably not. During the discourse I've had on my Joachim Yeu and Machinist videos, it's become very clear that something like a previous gen Ryzen is a much better price for performance, and also it doesn't suck electricity, and it's not weird and oddball. So that's the route I'd suggest you go down. Now, I personally love the X99 scene, and I've been building servers since the Presignia 500 by Compaq. And maybe if you want to put together a dual socket 36 core machine and run something like virtualization, you'll have a good time of it, because it's not going to be sensitive to memory latencies or anything like that. But yeah, for most things, don't do that. Get something ordinary. Obviously, if you're in an embargo destination or something unusual, you may have your own reasons for going old school, but do bear in mind that these Xeon E5 V4s are pretty old at this point. Anyway, that's all. Back to the feature presentation. Well, all booted up seems to be working fine. I think that's a success story for the Juan Andreu X99 P4F. My uh, CPU showing up there. 14 cores, 28 threads, can't complain. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM as well. I'm pretty sure the item I ordered from AliExpress was only supposed to have 8 gigs of RAM, 2 times 4 but it's actually got 2 times 16 It's Samsung registered DIMMs, so I probably just get the part number and order another 2 to fill the other 2 slots, get it to 64 gigs. Very nice. Um, I forgot to mention, I did add a little extra special item into this machine as I was going through my box of stuff that I had kicking around. Um, I added in something you don't often see on a machine, just 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 a little special something. Uh, I added in an optical drive, and I've got here my trusty Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun discs. So let me put in disc one, the GDI disc. Uh, into this optical bay and uh, see if it reads it um, because you know you can you can never have too many things that you don't need actually this is a blu-ray writer and everything so it's it's the business um, I'm sure I'll get plenty of use out of it actually I do have a CD that I need to rip 
No, really. So maybe I'll do that on here. Um, yes, indeed, it does indeed show a little GDI logo there in my Windows File Explorer. Anyway, enough of this absolute nonsense. That is the end of today's video. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Always glad to come back with another X99 video. Uh, this one was mostly without incident, so that's good. Guys, do, as usual, please feel free to comment below. You know I do enjoy your comments. Uh, you let me know if you have used a CD or DVD or Blu-ray disc recently, and for what purpose. Um, I would be very interested to know. Anyway, guys, that's all we've got time for. I certainly do look forward to seeing you in the next video. Uh, but for now, guys, uh, there's very little more for me to say. Except, well, goodbye. So, you're the new addition to the Brotherhood. Well, I'm Seth. Just Seth. From God to Cain to Seth. I'm his right hand, and I have a task for you. This is Nakumba, and he is causing the Brotherhood much grief. His views do not coincide with ours, and that makes him dangerous. Silence him. <laughs>